guy that gives uh, uh, nicknames, divisive nicknames or derogatory nicknames to his political opponents. Uh, Sleepy Joe Biden, Crooked Hillary. Um, what what did he say about uh, Ted Cruz's dad might have been the Zodiac? Like he just says so many out of pocket things that and then it's just. In this episode of The David Pakman Show, Destiny joins to debate MAGA commentator Dennis Prager, and things get lively as they dive into which political side is more divisive. Destiny, known for his strong debate skills, holds his ground and delivers some memorable lines while facing off against Prager. We'll go through some key clips from their discussion, sharing insights and breaking down their arguments along the way. Let's jump into this engaging debate between Destiny and Dennis Prager. It's another world. I don't know if like conservatives listening actually believe this, but when people say things like, oh, yeah, Joe Biden is so unbelievably divisive. Really? Joe Biden, the guy that gets on stage and, and that we've seen, like, has trouble stringing together sentences. This is the insanely divisive president of fiery rhetoric when he gets Joe. on stage and he's like, MAGA Americans. And when I say MAGA, I don't mean everybody. I just mean the ones that deny the election. Right. This is the guy that's insanely divisive. But when Trump says things like, uh, you know, well, there was the, uh, the the Second Amendment. They're coming for that and we can't do anything about it. Well, maybe the Second Amendment people, you, you know, can and everybody laughs. But when Joe Biden in a private meeting to donors says we need to put a bullseye on Donald Trump, like that was a, that's a violent, uh, that's a violent rhetoric. Give me a break. That's just it's well, a what deep, about that, Dennis? Opinion. I mean, what what you mentioned, the reference to white nationalism or, or white supremacy in Joe Biden's inauguration speech. But what else has Joe Biden done, in your view, to incite violence? Oh, I, I didn't say he incited violence. I thought the issue was divisiveness. Who is more responsible for divisive? Also, Donald Trump is one man. Uh, calling people Sleepy Joe or Little uh, Marco uh, is not in the same moral ballpark as calling people Nazis and depicting your opponent as the New Republic in this last issue painted uh, painted Donald Trump as Hitler. In this debate clip from the David Pakman show, Destiny and Dennis Prager dive into the topic of political divisiveness in the US. While this debate happened a few months ago, the discussion is still super relevant. David Pakman brings up some recent points about Trump, including his controversial comments about wanting generals as loyal as Hitler's were. That's brought more attention to whether Trump's influence is just about him personally or has spread throughout his political movement. Destiny makes the case that Joe Biden, often seen as someone who tries to bring people together, isn't the divisive figure he's sometimes portrayed as, especially since he's repeatedly tried to work across the aisle with Republicans like Mitch McConnell. This debate really highlights how each side sees the other and raises questions about Trump's rhetoric and its impact on the broader political scene. It, it, uh, the, the staggering amount of lies, it's the whole left world. It, it, Donald Trump is one man. The whole left is filled with hate. Uh, the, uh, the lie that, uh, that Donald Trump said that there were fine people who were Nazis in Charlottesville, even Snopes, which is left of center, in its fact-checking said it was false. That he ever said that that uh, the um, that Nazis the Nazis in Charlottesville were fine people. He wasn't referring to them. The New York Times continues that lie to today. Uh, Donald uh, uh, um, Joe Biden said that's the reason he ran for president in because of that horrific statement. The lying from the left and lying of smearing. This is not just Donald Trump. This is not just Joe Biden. The left smears. That's what they do. When I spoke at Arizona State University a year and a half ago, 34 professors of the 42 at the college that I spoke to at Arizona State said people should not attend because I am a bigot and a, and a homophobe and an Islamophobe and a racist and a this. That's all they do. I invited all of them onto my radio show. Any one of you 34, all 34 can come on my radio show. Not one accepted the invitation. Did one invite me into their classroom? Of course not. Dennis Prager often claims that progressives avoid debating him, but it's interesting because he's actually had debates with people like Jen Uger and Anna Kasparian. I've covered these debates on my channel before, and in one instance, Jen and Anna pointed out that despite his claim, he was literally on their show debating them. It's a classic example of how Prager frames the left as avoiding direct conversation, even though he's right there engaging in those discussions. 
constantly referring to uh, to to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is nothing compared to the whole world from the New York Times to Joe Biden. The world of the left is a world filled with smearing hate. Stephen, let me give you the last word on this before we move on. Yeah, I mean, if if Biden was invited to speak about a particular BLM riot and Biden would have ever uttered the words Antifa, stand back and stand by, like Donald Trump said for Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. I think that the conservative sphere of media would have erupted in anger. Uh, if you want to talk about like who's more divisive or not, you just need look no further than the legislation passed in Congress. You know, President Trump ran uh, for how long on repeal and replace the ACA? He wasn't able to replace it. He ran for how long on infrastructure? Biden was the one that passed that bill. Donald Trump didn't. And in terms of Donald Trump just being one man, Donald Trump is not just one man. Donald Trump is the entirety of the conservative party right now. And if you're a conservative politician or if you're in conservative media, you absolutely know that because you either toe his line or you are destroyed. Destiny makes a solid point here about the influence Donald Trump holds over the entire Republican Party. As he mentioned, many GOP leaders now feel they have to kiss the ring or align closely with Trump. It's an interesting question. If Kamala Harris were to win or Trump loses, what happens to this dynamic? Would Trump still have the same level of influence, or would Republicans start to shift? Dennis Prager, meanwhile, sticks to his usual claim that the left is all about smears and divisive rhetoric, while Destiny pushes back on this, pointing out how Biden has historically aimed to work with Republicans. If you're curious, you can catch the full debate on David Pakman's channel, which runs about 40 minutes, but let me know what you think. Who do you think made stronger points in this debate? Dennis Prager or Destiny? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. See you in the next one.